Hello students, I'm Mr. Troxel, and welcome to 6th grade math. Today I'm going to prep you for our unit quiz on ratio. This will be a 10 question review that will help you get through the basics of passing a ratio exam. Have a seat at your desk and let's get started. Feel free to freeze this video and do this on your own and then play it so you can see how you did. Let's look at question number one. Harry raced his broom 800 feet in 16 seconds. He said the speed of the broom was 60 feet per second, six zero. Assuming the broom raced at a constant speed, which statement is true? Well, before we can figure any of this out, we need to know what our ratio is. According to this problem, Harry raced his broom 800 feet in 16 seconds. What we need to come up with first is how many feet per second was he traveling? So we've got the feet on the top and the seconds on the bottom. We need to make one of these numbers a one so we get the unit ratio. And since we wanna know how many feet he's going per second or per one second, we need to make this bottom number one. So that 16 needs to be a one. The way we do that is dividing both the top and the bottom number by the 16. So if we do the bottom number divided by 16 and the top number divided by 16, we're gonna get our unit ratio. Well, we know 16 divided by 16 is one, so that's simple. Well, what's 800 divided by 16? Well, if you use a calculator, or if you just do it by hand, it winds up being 50. 50 times 16 is 800. So from this calculation, we can see that Harry on his broom is traveling at 50 feet per second. Now let's go to the question. The question here says, he said the speed of his broom was 60 feet per second, right? We came up with 50 feet per second, right? So is Harry correct or not? Well, it looks like Harry's wrong. So here's the answers. A, Harry is correct, nope. B, Harry is correct, nope. C, Harry is incorrect, that's a possibility. Let's see, Harry is incorrect. The broom was traveling 50 feet per second because 800 divided by 16 equal 50. Well, that is true. Or D, Harry is incorrect because the broom was traveling 16 feet per second because 800 divided by 50 equals 16. So that's not correct. Now, 800 divided by 50 is 16, so that part of the, the answer is correct. But the issue right here is uh, the broom is traveling 50, 16 feet per second, and it was not. It was traveling uh, 800 feet per 16 seconds, if you look right here, right? So that's wrong. It's actually traveling 50 feet per one second. So the answer to this is letter C. Harry is incorrect. The broom is traveling 50 feet per second because 800 divided by 16 equals 50. And 50 over one, or 50 feet per second, is the unit ratio or an equivalent ratio for 800 over 16 or 800 feet per 16 seconds. Did you get that one? Let's go to question two. Mr. McLagan purchased 15 bags of soil for $187.05. What was the price per bag of soil? You can do this a few ways. First, we can do our ratio. We have $187.05, right, for 15 bags of soil. So this is the price, and this is the bags of soil. What we need to do is to get one of these numbers down to one. Now, the question's asking, what was the price per bag of soil? So what was the price per one bag of soil? So we need to get this bags of soil down to one, and then we'll know the price per bag of soil. Well, the simplest way to do that is divide both of these numbers by 15, because 15 is in the spot where we need the one to be. So if we divide 15 by 15, we wind up with a one. And then if we divide 187.05 by 15, then we're gonna wind up with 12.47. So, what we have here is $12.47 for every one bag of soil. The question is, what was the price per bag of soil? The answer, letter A, $12.47 per bag of soil. You could have also just divided 187 by 15, and you would have gotten 12.47. The same number would have happened. So either way, this would have worked. But as far as doing it the ratio way, we're gonna do it this way right here. How'd you do on that one? All right, let's go to question three. 
The table shows the amount of money Lily earns depending on the amount of time she works. So here's her table right here. So we've got three to 27, three hours, $27. Six hours, $54. Nine hours, $81, and 12 hours, 108. What we need to figure out is Lily's ratio. The very first one they've given us is three hours over $27. Now I notice when I look at this, the three and 27 are both divisible by three. 27 is a multiple of three. So I need to come up with the unit ratio. How many dollars does Lily make for one hour? Since this is the hours up here, I need this number to be a one. What I'm gonna do here is divide them both by three because three is the one I want to be a one. So if I divide the top number by three and the bottom number by three, I'm gonna get one and 27 divided by three is nine. So I know that for every one hour, Lily makes $9. And if I go up here, three times nine is 27. Six times nine is 54. Nine times nine is 81. 12 times nine is 108. So Lily is making $9 an hour, right? I think we can agree on that, $9 an hour. Now. We're gonna to go to these tables over here and see which one of these is an equivalent earning rate to the $9 an hour she's making, all right? Let's go to letter A here. Is five hours times nine 25? It's not. Five times five is 25. 10 times five is 50. 15 times five is 75. And 20 times five is 100. So in this column, this person's making $5 per hour. Is that equivalent to $9 per hour? It's not. Let's go to letter C. C shows this person working five hours and making $50. Well, five times what is 50? Well, five times 10 is 50. 10 times 10 is 100. 15 times 10 is 150. And 20 times 10 is 200. So this person here is making $10 per hour. They're probably a teacher. Now let's go to D. Here we've got five hours worked and $40 earned. Well, I know that five times eight is 40. 10 times eight is 80. 15 times eight is 120, and 20 times eight is 160. So this person over here is making $8 an hour. So far, none of these are equivalent to $9 an hour. Let's go to letter B. In letter B, the person's working five hours and making $45. Well, five times what is 45? Well, as it turns out, five times nine is 45. 10 times nine is 90. 15 times nine is 135, and 20 times nine is 180. So in this column here, this person is making $9 an hour. So, we know that Lily's making $9 an hour. Only one of these charts shows the equivalent of $9 an hour, and that would be letter B right here. How'd you do? Did you catch that one? All right, let's see how you do on the next question. It's on to question four. During a winter storm, a cabin received eight inches of snow in 10 hours. The snow fell at a steady rate. How many inches of snow fell each hour? Let's take the numbers they've given us and create our ratio. We know that there's eight inches of snow and that's happening over a period of 10 hours. What we need to do is figure out how much snow fell each hour. So I need the hours right here to be one. How do I get the hours to be one? Well, in order to get that 10 to be a one, I need to divide the bottom by 10. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So 10 divided by 10 gives us our one hour. And then eight divided by 10 gives us 0 0.8. So I know by doing my division here that I've got 0 0.8 inches of snow, uh, just about under an inch of snow every hour. So it would make sense in 10 hours, I would have under 10 inches of snow. Let's go to the answers over here. Do one of these show 0 0.8 inches of snow falling each hour? They do, letter D. Now be careful because B doesn't have the point right there. That's just eight inches of snow every hour. If that was the case, in 10 hours, there would be 80 inches of snow and that would be pretty hard to comprehend unless maybe you lived in Alaska or Green Greenland or something. So 0.8 is a much smaller amount. It's less than an inch of snow every hour. 0 0.8 is the same thing as saying 0.8. So 0.8 inches of snow every hour. 
Did you get that one? It could be a little tricky. All right, question five. Mrs. Sprout purchased eight plants for a total of $32. She wants to purchase another 18 plants at the same unit price. How much will she pay for 18 plants? Well, it's important here that we put our ratio down first. We've got eight plants, right, for $32. What we need to figure out is the unit ratio. How much does it cost for one plant? How do we get that number of plants to a one? Well, we're gonna have to divide both numbers by the eight, right? Because that will make the eight a one. If we divide them both by 32, then we're gonna wind up with the eight being less than one. So we need the eight to be a one, so that's what we're doing. So eight divided by eight is one, and 32 divided by eight is four. That gives us a total price per plant of $4. So $4 per plant. She wants to purchase another 18 plants at the same unit price. How much will 18 plants cost? Now we're not gonna figure out what she's already paid because she wants to purchase 18 more. We're only interested in the price of the next 18. If it asks us for the price of the 18 plus the eight, then we would need to figure in the other eight also. But right now, we're just answering the question about how much will 18 plants cost. Well, now that we know that they're $4 per plant, right, we just need to do 18 times 4. So let's multiply this. 8 times 4 is 32. We'll carry the 3. 4 times 1 is 4. 5, 6, 7. $72. 18 times 4 is $72. So for 18 more plants, it's going to cost $72. And the answer is B. How'd you do on that one? That one wasn't too bad. Question six. The table below shows the number of students in middle school who play sports after school. What is the ratio of soccer players to basketball players? All right, this is a reducing question. So first we wanna look at the soccer players, which are right here. So we have 36. Next we want the basketball players, which is right here. So that's 42. 36, 42, that's our ratio. It might be easier for you to write it as a fraction because when you're reducing, you might be able to, to better understand a number that works with the two of them if they're in that format. I can do it either way, but sometimes for some people, the fraction is easier. Now, when I look at these two numbers, 36 and 42, I try and think of a number that goes into both of them. When I look at this 36 and 42, I know that they're both divisible by six. So I'm gonna divide both of them by six. Six is their greatest common factor that they share. 36 divided by six is six, and 42 divided by six is seven. So my answer here is six over seven or six colon seven, depending on how you're gonna write that. So I'm gonna come over here and go, hey, there's my answer right there. A, six over seven. How'd you do on that one? If you know how to reduce, then this one was pretty simple. Question seven, Arthur estimates that he uses 12 gallons of gasoline, I'm guessing, to drive 324 miles. What is his estimate as a ratio of miles to gallon? So they've given us the number 12 for how many gallons of gas over 324, which is the number of miles that he's driven with that 12 gallons. What we need to figure out is, what is his ratio of miles to gallons? That means miles to one gallon. So we need this number here to be a one. The way we could do that is to divide both numbers by 12. So if I divide this by 12 and I divide this by 12, what do I get? Well, 12 divided by 12 is one, which is the whole point of why we're doing this. And 324 divided by 12 happens to be 27. So I know that for every one gallon, Arthur is going 27 miles or 27 miles per gallon. So when I look at my answers, which one of these shows as estimate as a ratio of miles per gallon? Well, it's right here, 27 miles per gallon. That's not bad for a gas guzzling car. Arthur might want to switch to an electric or a hybrid to get better fuel economy. How did you do on this one? Were you able to figure it out? All right, let's look at question eight. Cedric surveyed people at a farmer's market on which fruit they thought was the nicest. Okay. He created the bar graph representing his results below. What is the ratio of apples to blueberries? Well, the apples are right here. It looks like we've got 35. And then the blueberries are right here. And it looks like we've got 
40. Now, when I look at this, I know that they're both divisible by 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, right? So 5 times what is 35? And 5 times what is 40? Let's divide them both by 5 and find out. I know that 7 times 5 is 35, and I know that 8 times 5 is 40. So my answer here should be 7 eighths or 7 colon 8. Let's go to the answers, and do we see it over here? Well, we absolutely do. And when we're doing ratios, you can always say 7 to 8. So the one I'm going to pick right here is D, 7 to 8. How'd you do on this one? This one was pretty simple. All right, we've got another person driving a car. Duddle's family drove 360 miles using 12 gallons of gas. At this rate, how many miles can they drive on 9 gallons of gas? Well, to figure this out, we need to know how far the Duddle family can go on just one gallon of gas. Then we can multiply for the 9. We've got our 360 to start off with over 12. So we have 360 miles driven and 12 gallons of gas used. We need one of these numbers to be a one. So since this is the gallon, I need this to be a one right here. How do I get that 12 to be a one right there? Well, I'm gonna need to divide by 12. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm gonna divide both numbers by 12. 12 divided by 12 is obviously one, which is why we did that. And 360 divided by 12 turns out to be 30. So I know that the Duddle family is going 30 miles for every gallon of gas, or 30 miles per gallon. Now, now that I know that, how many miles can they drive on nine gallons? Now I'm just gonna take my 30 and times it by nine. Well, I know that 30 times 10 is 300, so it's gonna be just under 300. And it turns out that 30 times nine is 270. So at this rate, how many miles can the Duddle family drive on nine gallons of gas if they're getting 30 miles per gallon? Right here, 270 miles, letter C. How'd you do on that one? One day you'll have to drive and know all this for yourself, and by then, we probably won't have any more gas cars. <laughs> Question 10. Parvati has a bag with these jelly beans in it. Six red jelly beans, four blue jelly beans, and two green jelly beans. Which of the following is a ratio that describes the jelly beans in the bag? So all of these may be correct, but one of them is set up in the format of a ratio. And the ratio is set up where for every something, you have something, right? For every one of these, you have something of these, right? That's what a ratio means. So let's look at letter A. There are four more red jelly beans than there are green jelly beans. Well, there's six red jelly beans and two green jelly beans. So that answer is true. There are four more red jelly beans than there are green jelly beans. But is that saying for every something jelly beans, there's something jelly beans? It does not. That's just stating a fact. Question B, for every one green jelly bean, there are three red jelly beans. Well, let's look at that. There's two green jelly beans and six red jelly beans. If we reduce that, we'd wind up with one green jelly bean for every three red jelly beans. And what is the answer saying? Well, for every one green jelly bean, there are three red jelly beans. Is that the case? It is. And is it stated in the format of a ratio? For every, you have so many, it is. For every one green jelly bean, there are three red jelly beans. That one sounds correct, but let's check the other answers. Letter C says, there are more blue jelly beans than green jelly beans. Well, we've got four blue and two green. That is true, but is it stated as for every something you have something? No. And then letter D, there are a total of 12 jelly beans. There are a total of 12 jelly beans, but again, are we doing the format of for every you have something. We're not. So the only possible answer for this is B. All these answers are true, but only one of them is set up as a ratio. How did you do on this one? Did this one stymie you? It can be kind of tricky. Please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe or I'm giving you detention. There's the bell. We'll see you next time.